Hey guys, what's going on? So today I have an album review for Brodigan's Instruments of Torture. And background, we're listening to Eutridides' Degenerate Anthropophagical, Anthropophagical Euphoria. I don't know how to fucking pronounce it. Insanely heavy, real death metal album. I know a lot of people don't like Eutridides because, wow, they use too many blast beats. But what else do you want from real death metal? I mean, do you want, like, ballads or some shit? Like, Anyways, that was just a little rant there. Um... I'll kind of talk about more of those kind of complaints people have about the genre with this album or Brodigan in general. Because Brodigan is a band that's, they are very raw and brutal and fast for the sake of being very raw, brutal, and fast. But that is not a bad thing in any way. And I'll talk about that. But anyways, uh, if you don't know Brodigan, they're a brutal death metal band from Tennessee. A very popular brutal death metal band for sure. One of the biggest. Um... They own their own label, Unmatched Brutality, I'm sure you've heard of if you're into the, the genre. Um, and their style of rural death metal is extremely raw, very grind influenced. If you like stuff like uh, Discord from Mexico, and also Discord from the US, um, you'll like this. If you like really noisy, grindy rural death metal, you'll like this. Um, if you like Scooped Mids, you will love this album. Uh, so this is Brodkin's first album. I have all three of their albums, and I'll be reviewing all three of them. Um, this is definitely the most popular. I'd probably say this might be my least favorite out of the three, but it's still great. All three of their albums are fantastic, and this is still, like, a masterpiece of brutal death metal. But I think that the other albums, um, took what this did a little further, which I like a little more. But if you're new to Brodkin, this album is a great place to start. But anyways... Their style of bro death metal, a lot of blast beats, um, vocals are kinda, I wanna say they sound like inhales, but they're not like waking the cadaver, I use that as an example for shitty inhales so much, but, you know, they're not like the <laughs> type of vocals, they're more like, uh, <clears throat> they're more like defeated sanity, Psalms of the Morbid type of inhales, where they're like, really low, um, really guttural sounding, because the vocals on this are fucking awesome, the guitars are ridiculously scooped and have like, obje objectively shitty guitar tone, but in a good way. They usually have a very cranked snare. Um, this album is pretty cranked, but it's not like, it doesn't sound like a, like a pan like it does on the other albums. It sounds more like, um, it, it, it has a little less of a pop to it, and it's more flat sounding, but it's like a more of like a thud on this album. But yeah, really raw, scooped, juicy sounding production on here. Uh, kind of muddy sounding, actually very muddy sounding, but in a good way, like I said. The bass is basically inaudible. Not a bad thing, though, of course, because if you want Brodekin, you just want ridiculousness. That's what this is. Uh, their lyrical themes are about, like, medieval torture and stuff. As you can tell in this album cover, I think that's a very unique concept for brutal death metal. Kind of reminds me of, like, how Nile focuses on, like, Egyptian stuff. It's like Brodekin was with, like, medieval shit. Um... This is a reissue put out through Unmatched Brutality, their label. This was really put out through Ablated Records, which if you don't, if you don't know Ablated Records, they put out, like, um, Regurgitation, Tales of Necrophilia, stuff like that. Um, but this is just a reissue. There's a little crack in the case, but it's whatever. There's the disc. You have some badass artwork there, and it says Instruments of Torture. Uh, I want to say this came out in, like, 2000. They're a pretty old, rural death metal band, of course. Old school type of stuff, uh, which is my favorite type of rural death metal either way. Uh, but yeah, it looks like he just got all the lyrics. Pretty good lyrics, I'd say. But yeah, um, they're three-piece, by the way, so it's bass and, um, Jimmy Bailey on bass and vocals, Michael Bailey on guitar, and slash percussion, I guess, and then Chad Walls on drums, of course. Fun fact, actually, he, uh, I believe he had some sort of, correct me if I'm wrong, he had some sort of, like, back injury or something. So instead of them just getting a new drummer, they, uh, he plays, like, finger drums on stage now. It's, like, it's so, like, weird but cool. It's hilarious to watch. He's, like, a, he has, like, you know, like, a little box with, like, buttons on it. He's just, like, tapping them really fast for drums. Um, I think that's cool, though, that he kept going on anyways. He didn't let that stop him. But back to talking about this album. If you like the production on old Disgorge albums, take, like, Cranial Impelment. I think that's a good example. Imagine that, but a little bit more flat sounding and a little more muddy, and that's basically this. Um, this isn't as ridiculously noisy as they would become later on, especially on the next album, uh, Festival of Death, but 
Uh, you got some really catchy songs on here. I mean, they're ridiculously fast and grindy, but they mix in little chuggy riffs that are really groovy and characteristic of old brutal death metal, uh, especially in songs like Spinning in Agony and Ambrosia. Uh, the drums, there's a ton of blast beats on here, but there's also some like really fast-paced uh, skank beats. Uh, a good example of that, there's a lot of that in uh, The Virgin of Nuremberg, or Nuremberg, I don't know. I, just, I can't really read the, the font very well. Uh, that's another one of the best songs on here. There's a sample at the beginning of that song. It's like some guy saying some sort of incantation or something. Um, Duke of Exeter has like a little spinning sound effect at the end. Uh, you got some bonus tracks uh, from the Anatomical Depths and the Garot. I believe those are from another release from Broadkin. I don't know uh, which release. I know they have like an EP or demo or two besides their three albums. Um... But yeah, if you like ridiculously fast and brutal shit with like super guttural vocals, tons of blast beats, just what you can't go wrong with this if you want brutal death metal that's just noisy and chaotic. Now I know some people complain that ooh, there's nothing more to it; it's just brutal for the sake of being brutal, and a lot of people complain about that with a lot of brutal death metal. But I mean, what else could you possibly want from brutal death metal? I mean, I mean, it's nice when there's a little extra stuff in there, like you know, bits of like like say like a band like Orcas and how they. Um, they have little bits of melody and stuff. That's cool, but if you just want pure brutality, then you can't go wrong with this type of stuff. I mean, that's like that's like watching a movie like uh, that's like watching like a movie like Good Burger and then complaining that there is no like deep character development or morals of the story. It's like if you want that, go listen to fucking I don't know, go listen to like Dream. That's such a generic band to <laughs> use as a scapegoat for like snobs, but go listen to Dream Theater or the like, Tool or something if you want deep shit. If you just want, like, half an hour of just insane, fast, guttural shit, then this is the album for you. Um, really any of Vodakin's albums. I think there are other albums, they evolved their sound a little more to the point where it got a lot more chaotic and a little more unique. This is not generic at all for Brutal Death Metal, but... They, uh, they took this sound even further is what I mean. Like, they they got even noisier and harder to discern. Um, I don't know. It's, they're just a ridiculous band. And, um, yeah, I highly recommend this album if you have not listened to it. If you're into Brutal Death Metal, you've probably heard of Brodekin. Even if you're not into Brutal Death Metal, if you're new to Brutal Death Metal, this, not the other two albums, do not listen to those if you're new to Brutal Death Metal, because those are, like, ridiculous and took me a while to get into. But if you're new to Brutal Death Metal as a whole, this is not a bad place to start because it's very chunky sounding and it's a good example. It's not the most lighthearted thing that you'll hear in the genre. It's pretty extreme, <clears throat> but uh, it's very, like, it's easy to get into. At least it was for me, this album. I heard this album the first when I was like 15 years old, I think. And uh, I instantly really liked it because it's just very, you know, chaotic and fun. Um, I'd probably give this an 8 out of 10. I don't think it's the best Brodekin album. It's definitely the most popular because it's the most accessible. But, uh, I'd say towards the end of the album, it starts to get just a little bit, like, I'm not saying it drags because it's a short, it's a short album, I believe, without the bonus tracks. It's under half an hour. But, you know, it, I'm not, it's not a bad thing that it's repetitive, but the last few songs, I'd say, aren't quite as strong as the first four or five even six but this is still a pretty much flawless album I mean that's not that much of a problem it's just if you want pure ridiculous shit you will get that with this so yeah uh, Brodekin Instruments of Torture 8 out of 10 highly recommend if you haven't heard it so yeah uh, that's it for this video though hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to like comment subscribe see you next time bye